It wasn't conceived in Switzerland, as far as I know, but no computing device has ever given me the sense of utility that this felt and sexy two-in-one has. In all honesty, I can't explain it. I've put this device on the back shelf, so to speak, on many occasions, and even planned on returning it. But every time I see that thin and sexy clamshell sitting there, I want nothing more than to pick it up and make it work for me. Actual utility be damned. If I'm being honest, I'm embarrassed to say that I may or may not have had one or more delightful dreams that involved on wrapping this bad boy into an ultra cool and eye-catching horizontal dual screen configuration with keyboard in tow and just, well, doing computer-related things. And at the risk of giving the final verdict away, I must say that I love this device, even though in this incarnation, it may just not quite be there for me as a primary development machine. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. There is yet more that needs to be discussed to call it one way or the other. So with no further ado, we've unboxed it, we've installed resource intensive stuff on it and used them, we've used it for a week or so as a daily development box, we've even taken it on the road for a busy day in the Big Apple. It's now time to give my impression of this dual screen dynamo in this final review of the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i, starting now. For those who don't know me, I'm a pretty positive person. To that end, we start out this review with the things that the 9i does well. For this device, that ultimately boils down to hardware. And to that end, nothing exemplifies its utility more than its well-conceived industrial design. Now, I couldn't tell you which periodic table elements make up the chassis of this thing, but that's not what we do here. Suffice it to say that it seems rigid and well put together. Two beautiful 2.8K OLED touch enabled screens attached at a hinge with a Bowers and Watkinson speaker grill provide a delightful preview of what's to come. Elegance, simplicity, form, and function. If you drooled at the thought of holding the dearly departed Surface Neo in your hands one day, your prayers have been answered in, to me, a far more practical form factor. And because this is a yoga, you know that screen can be rotated 360 degrees into tablet form anytime you need it. In standard configuration, one screen serves as the main laptop screen, while the other screen, which I have come to refer to as the keyboard screen, doubles as both a monitor and a digital keyboard when needed. All you need to do is touch the screen with eight fingers and it pops right up. More on the software needed to make this happen later. The idea of the included keyboard manipulating the keyboard screen is also pretty cool. Depending on where you place it, the visible part of the bottom screen can either be used as a trackpad or as a widget area that provides you with updates based on your interests. It comes with three USB Type-C ports, a Bluetooth keyboard which does not require batteries, and a Bluetooth mouse and stylus which do. Additionally, it comes with a foldable dock, which fortunately includes a nifty slot where the stylus can be attached. Sorry, Hurley Smith. Using the Microsoft Surface as a comparison, this comes out to somewhere in the order of $300 in value that you would have otherwise had to have purchased along with the device. You can also expect to find the usual suspects in terms of built-in accessories. That means a front-facing camera array, which due to its flexibility, also doubles as a back-facing camera array. And as is commonplace, bundled with the Windows Hello facial recognition system. You also get Bluetooth Wi-Fi and the obligatory accelerometer. The processor is solid. Lenovo aptly selected the Intel Core i7 with 10 cores. My configuration 
which came to about $1,800 retail US, came with 16 gig of RAM and 512 gig available for storage. On the software side, you get Windows 11 and the requisite software for driving all the enhancements that allow for the bottom screen to serve as a keyboard. Sadly, you also get weird and irrelevant bloatware that seems to serve no other purpose but to take up time during the setup process. Microsoft, please do something about this. It's getting ridiculous. Sadly, these phenomena of poor software experiences are, for the most part, par for the course as it relates to the 9i and kicks off the discussion on the problems with the device. The good news is that all the issues I've faced so far ultimately boil down to OS integration. And over the course of the three weeks that I've had this device, there have been numerous updates to improve the performance and stability of the software that's bundled with it. So, what do I think? Well, let me start by saying that I'm convinced that this has to be the future of laptops if they're to compete in the changing landscape of personal computing devices. Unfortunately, as it relates to the operating system powering this experience, there just doesn't seem to be a tight enough integration between the vision Lenovo has and the operating system it runs on to provide a user experience anywhere close to the standard set by Android or iOS devices. And at this point, I'm just running out of reasons in my head to justify this disparity. Now, sitting still and using it purely as a laptop, you'll likely not notice the problem. But doing so begs the question, what's the point of all this utility if I can't, at the very least, also use this as a tablet replacement. When compared to the Surface devices or even the Surface Book when using just the quote-unquote clipboard mode, it visibly lags and is extremely glitchy and janky. In addition to this, transitions between the digital keyboard and dual screen mode often leave windows that were on the bottom keyboard screen orphan behind it and impossible to retrieve without reverting back to dual screen mode and physically moving the window over yourself. The custom wallpaper animation is designed to react to the clamshell opening and closing, glitch out on many an occasion, and are more importantly, not integrated into windows in any way. Rather, they sit in a layer above Windows and have to be configured using a completely separate utility. Yet another settings area. I realize, of course, that many of these issues have less to do with the OEM and more to do with the increasingly limited and very rigid feeling API surface area for augmenting Windows in any way. In fact, I have zero doubts that if this were an Android device, the jagged animations, awkward rotation alignment, and just plain embarrassing transition effects would all just work naturally and perfectly. Seriously, when an out-of-the-box Galaxy Tab 9 seems more fluid and integrated than a whole Windows device, there's a problem. We've had years now of knowing what customers have become accustomed to and the lipstick on a pig approach is starting to see major cracks in it. Almost every young person I interact with these days has a strong preference for Macs or would rather use some combination of iPad and remote desktop to get their job done. And this is honestly quite unfortunate. All right, getting off my soapbox, what do I think of this device? I wasn't kidding earlier when I said this has to be the future of laptops. If I could get my hands on a version of this device with an ARM chip in it that provided the same kind of power profile as even a MacBook Air, I honestly don't think I would ever look back. It's a great device for information workers using word processing, spreadsheet, and or presentation software. 
It will run perfectly if your primary use case is browsing the web, listening to music, editing images with products like Photoshop, and you can get Visual Studio and mid-core development tools on it, and it runs perfectly fine. That being said, at an $1,800 price point, I would not recommend this device if you're doing any kind of hardcore coding or other resource-intensive activities. For folks that need that, I would suggest waiting to see if future versions of it will come out with a more performant hardware configuration. If you've gotten to the point where your workflow can be comfortably performed on a tablet, this might be for you. But in that case, you might want to wait to see if the 9i will be offered with an operating system that offers more seamless integration with the form factor. All in all, it's a great device for development, especially when paired with a dock and keyboard, as it offers a native dual experience that is highly useful. If you have the deep pockets for it, would like to be highly productive on the go, and don't mind the glitchiness of non-native customizations to Windows 11, then the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i is a great product for you. If you enjoy our content, please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, happy coding and have a blessed day.